Now it's time to begin session three, which is CEO Roundtable. The topic is challenges of making Mumbai a world-class city. Our speakers are Mr. Amit Gosen, Managing Director, Kone Elevator India and South Asia. He will be our moderator. Mr. Hafiz Contractor, Eminent Architect. Mr. Rajan Bandelkar, President Naredko. And Mr. Masood Malik, Chief Executive Officer, RE Sustainability Limited. I request all our speakers to please come up on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, with a big round of applause, let's welcome our next speakers for CEO Roundtable. Good morning. The crowd seems to be in a good tempo. So firstly, let me just congratulate uh, Mr. Rahul Shivale. And of course, Mr. Ramamurthy. I think you have really done a great job in uh, organizing this seminar before COVID and now after COVID. Again, you can see the crowd back in complete action. I was a part of your last discussion as well and a lot of things came out, but unfortunately COVID hit and things were changing. But I'm sure, uh, you know, we'll have a great uh, time today and a lot of things will come out. Secondly, of course, I asked Ramamurthy, who are the panelists and uh, can I have an introduction? He said, when I give you the names, you, you actually need not have an introduction because you'll know all of them. So that was one of the things I said thank you. And when I actually saw the names, I said I know all of them. Let me not even read about anything. But we still have an introduction. Uh, let me start with me. I'm, uh, my name is Amit Gusai. I'm the managing director for Indian South Asia for Kone Elevators India. We are the largest elevator company, manufacturing company in India. We have a factory in uh, Chennai that is putting all efforts to make sustainable green elevators. So that's the thing. And we have a capacity of about 200 elevators per day. And uh, let me now start uh, the introducing the main thing, the panelist, uh, Mr. Hafiz Contract. I'll start with the architect who's a Padma Bhushan. 2016, of course, a very celebrated person. You all know him. And he's uh, done a lot of skyscrapers in what you see, very stylish, environmentally friendly. I know you've done the 42 Chorangi. Do you know the highest skyscraper in India is actually not in Mumbai. It's in Calcutta right now. Of course, Mumbai will have it uh, very, very soon. We'll probably break the record, but the highest is 42 Chorangi in Calcutta, if I'm not wrong. I know this because I've been to that building many times. It happens to have our elevators as well. And I think a very uniquely designed project. But of course, the Twin Towers in Mumbai is another project that you've done, which is fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful building again, and many, many buildings. Then we've got Mr. Rajan Pandelkar, chairman of Naredko. He's also very, very well known. Of course, uh, director of Rona Group as well. I think you've got some 5 million square feet of projects that you've done. Quite a while ago, we met in one of the virtual conferences and he's uh, known as an out-of-box thinker. So we have to really see and get a lot of out-of-box thinking here today. Then we have Mr. Masood Malik, one of the largest sustainable companies, re-sustainability, is the CEO there. You employ about 20,000 people. Um, I know this company because I worked in solid waste management with, with you when it was a different name. But uh, one of the largest, I think, solid waste management companies in India and, uh, and now spread in many countries as well. So with that, um, I have actually have a list of questions from you, but I'd just turn it around and make it simpler because the audience would like to hear what Mumbai has to do. So I'll make uh, just very, very simply, and you, anybody can start first. What are the five or three things each I'd like to have on what Mumbai needs to be, what we need to do in Mumbai? One, can it be a most livable city? Okay, and I'll give you some facts. Uh, there is Singapore. I don't want to compare with Shanghai. I've been to Shanghai many times because I don't think we can compare. I think we can compare to Singapore uh, in a way. Same GDP, that's why I want to compare it. Population is about four times in Mumbai. And... Another big thing is, is we've got about the same area. We've got about 700 uh, square kilometers and Singapore's got about 720 square kilometers. So similar thing, but four times the population. And uh, can, can Mumbai become the most livable city? If it can, what are the three things each of you would suggest can be done so that, uh, you know, I think we can capture them and maybe take them into account. And I'll, I'll get to the how later. So we'll start with Mr. Uh, Mr. Hafiz's no, contract. I think, you know, what you, what you just said about uh, Singapore, okay? Uh, look at Singapore, what it was in 1960s. Look at Mumbai, what it was in 1960s. Okay? What Singapore has done, how much of reclamation Singapore has done, what kind of policies Singapore has proposed. The biggest problem 
for Mumbai is that we have been just talking, talking, talking and saying the premier city, the commercial capital, but we are not seeing what is happening around the world. We are just keeping on saying that we are the premier city. We have lost that position long time back. Look at 60s, what was Mumbai? What were the other cities of India? We had the best airport or we had the international airport. Everybody wanting to go and see Agra also has to land in Mumbai, stay in Mumbai and then go. Today, we have lost that position. Now there are so many airports, so we can't just say that we had that you know, international airport. Second, in that time, we had power, where most of the cities had no power. They were black by evening. We had power. We had telephone. We had water. And what we did, we are the most foolish people, sorry to say, there are ministers and everybody, but I'm saying it again, we are the most foolish people. You know, there is a very good saying, na, in Gujarati, Pagma Kuwari Maro. You know, I don't know where everybody understands Gujarati or not. You take an X, and put it on your own. What we did? Why did the IT industry went away from Mumbai? People wanted to set up their IT industries over here. But we, like foolish people, made a law that no office buildings will be allowed in the city of Mumbai. Do you know that there was a law like that? No. Does anybody else know that there was a law like that? The biggest trouble is that you make any law in an urban area, the results come out after the earliest result come out in five years, no, not in five years. It'll be taking 10 to 15 years. And by the time you realize what is happening, the guy who has made the law is gone. So that, we made that law. The IT industry went to Bangalore. Bangalore, there were nothing. There were only small, small houses. People started sitting in the houses and started their practice. IT industry was pushed. We literally kicked them from Mumbai. Now, Everything and everything, if you look at it, we are our biggest enemies. We are creating laws which are completely against our city. We are an island city. Everyone is talking about 430 square kilometers. Yes, it's 430 square kilometers. Out of which 100 square kilometers goes off in Sanjay Gandhi National Park. 10 square kilometers goes off in Godrej, you know, mangroves. Another some 30, 40 goes off in railway land and army land and all that. Finally, you are left with only 100 square kilometers. What is the population? 12 million, 13 million, 14 million. I can't even put a tab on what is the population of Mumbai because every census says everything. What is left? If you look at it, you take the population and you take the area and forget about that you're going to have any hospitals, schools, parks, nothing. Divide that, divide your population. Say that, you know, you're going to give so many square feet also. What is the FSI coming to? According to my calculation, it comes to about eight or nine. But our city fathers, if my wife is going to have a kid and I have a one bedroom house or at least a I will say, hey, bhai, uh, let us make a new court or something like that. Our city fathers don't think about that. People are coming. Where are they going to stay? Forget it. What about FSI? No, 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 we can't increase the FSI because everybody thinks that if the FSI is increased, it will benefit builders. No, it is not going to benefit builders. It is going to benefit, yes, the builder will benefit for the first few months, but afterwards it is going to benefit the general people. Today, we are saying, you know, more than, you know, 50% of our people are staying in slums. Why? We are not having any policies for social housing. Now we are talking about social housing. And that also, we should be, our politicians should be forceful and say, we have to do it. We have to do it. We don't have that guts to make proper laws uh, because we are thinking, what will the media print tomorrow? That is what you all, all are afraid of. Don't be afraid of that. Make the right policy which is going to be for the future. But you politicians are not forceful. We have ruined our city by making foolish laws. The last development control rule. What is it? You are killing your people. We are the most expensive you know, city in the, uh, I would say, in whole of India. Our FSI, you know how much of premiums you are asking? If you even go and compare those premiums with New York, Tokyo, and they also will be shocked. The amount of premiums that you are asking, I am even shocked. Shame to say the figure. When we had proper laws, basement,
events, everything, everything. In 82, when I used to go to Delhi, I used to go to Chennai, everybody used to, oh, Bombay se aaya. Bombay se mein kitna FSI, this, this, this. And I used to say like this, I used to say, oh, we can make two basements, we can go out of our building perimeter and make this. And we approach the Gurgaon government and it said you should make laws like that, you should do like this, you should do like this. They have gone forward. And what we have done? We have gone backward because we only want to make money. Don't say hope. It is a fact. See, just because I'm an architect and I've been always saying increase FSI to the amount of people that you are having. You have to house your people. You have to get your housing policies on with your earning capacity. You can't just say that you are the most expensive city. That's a disgrace. A person should be able to buy a house. Today, we are not making policies which are worth it. We are talking about how to make Mumbai, comparing it with Shanghai and all that. What laws they are making? We are destroying the laws that we have made. We don't have public spaces. Whatever we have also, we do not encourage any public spaces. Whatever good laws we had, we destroyed that. Yesterday also, our honorable chief minister said, you should make iconic buildings. Why are we talking only of iconic buildings? Change your laws. Let each and every building be a proper and a nice look building you should immediately change all your DC rules I have been giving petitions after petitions after petitions after petitions and I should say it again to each and every chief minister each and every chief secretary urban secretary everybody says yes we will look into it yes we will look into it thank God this is the first chief minister who has said we will do it okay and he is also publicly saying that he will do it so the first and foremost thing for Mumbai is we have to change laws and another thing which is very 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 important in your company do you make the laws for your company or somebody else makes the laws for your company just answer yes or no we make it, yeah. you make it no? for our city most of the most important laws no we don't make it. Delhi makes it. Nagpur makes it. Okay? Then how the hell are you going to progress? We are talking about Western Express Highway and the free. We were lucky that when Mr. Devinder Fadnavis was the chief minister, okay, and the center with his influence, the coastal road got. We have been talking about coastal roads since 1959, when none of the other cities in the whole of India even had a ring road. Today, Ahmedabad has ring road 1, ring road 2, Hyderabad. Hyderabad was only two roads, road number one and road number two. Today, what it has? And what do we have? Nothing, nothing. So, you should say, you should catch hold of all the politicians and say, get up from your bloody sleep. CRZ, every time you have to go. We are an island city. For us, the CRZ law has to be a different. It is that, you know, on the coast where you can build more. We have said, no, you have to build less. Each and every other city, all the riversides, everything is developed. Why they are allowed? Why not Mumbai? It's a tragic situation and I'm telling you, first of all, every politician, I make a request. When you say, Jai Maharashtra, Jai Hind, first caste saying, Jai Mumbai. Very apt. Very I think everybody is enjoying your talk and very relevant. So, one thing is we know the history. I'd like Naretko, chairman now, if you can tell us, maybe from your point of view, what are three things? Now, there's a lot of history to Mumbai and policies. What are the three things that we need to do for Mumbai? First of all, I would request all of you to give a real round of applause <laughs> to Hafiz because, because let me tell you, sitting on this place, and talking like this, probably I might be hearing the first person. I don't know whether you people have heard or not. Otherwise, we come here and talk only good, 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 good things. Because we know that next day, after we go to our own, we know that Rahul Shewal Ji will get to meet. If Rahul Shewal Ji will sit in front of us, if we talk about something, or if there is an officer who is sitting there, I have to take a file tomorrow. No, no, no. We don't talk about it. But because of that, because he is... He is the one person, I really little bit beg to differ you on today. Why I will tell you today? Because today we have a chief minister and a deputy chief minister who are probably the best two politicians which our state could have got any time who are accessible. You convince them, they immediately give orders and deliver. I said that. Yeah. 
So now the onus is on us, you and me. We should come together. Let's prepare a paper. Because what sir is telling exactly right. See, because now I am the national president, I have to visit all states and all cities. I will tell you, it's a real, real shame for us to tell that we live in Mumbai. Because if you see the infrastructure, you go to Noida. Noida is today in real estate, if you ask, the most cursed city would be Noida. But if you see the infrastructure there, you see, go and see Gurgaon. You go and see Hyderabad. Bangalore has become worst. But these cities, even I will tell you, I was in Raipur. You can't imagine, they have such a big road, sir. Udar, sirf jhadi hai, gaadi bhi nahi hai, public nahi hai, log nahi hai. Lekin road itne bade bana hai na, you can't imagine. Matlab, unho ne pahle infrastructure bana diya hai. Hamare yaan pe kya hai ki pahle public aati hai. And sir, Rahul Shavala sir, one thing, I will tell you very honestly, what our politicians are, pardon me for saying this, Afish ji ne thudi himmat di, isle bol raha hoon. Kya hota hai? You people think of votes. Stop thinking of votes. आप काम करो आपको वोट मिलेगा. क्या होता है कि अगर एक बिल्डिंग रस्ते में आती है, वो तोड़ने का है, तो उसको वहाँ पे लगता है कि नहीं हमारे लोग रह रहे हैं यार हमारे मतदार हैं. Please, my folded and request. क्या होगा कि वो बिल्डिंग के 50 लोगों का वोट नहीं मिलेगा लेकिन उसके वजह से जो रास्ता बना ना 5000 वोट आपको मिलेगा इट्स अ फैक्ट बिकॉज़ थैंक्स फॉर हिम टेलिंग मी आई ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स इंस्टेड ऑफ आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स जिधर गर्दी है तो मैं बोला उल्टे रास्ते से चले जाओ तो ये जैसे रास्ते से जाने के पहले वहां से जल्दी पहुंच जाए थोड़ा रास्ता लंबा होता है सो दिस इज अ रियल फैक्ट बिकॉज़ अगर लगता है किसी आदमी को समझो मेरी बिल्डिंग है मेरा नुकसान हो रहा है यू कॉम्पेंसेट मी समवेयर एल्स बिकॉज़ यू कैन आस्क हु आर द ऑफिसर्स हु हैव डेल्ट विद मी I don't go out of the four corners of wall. Yeah, उसके अंदर जितना भी adjust करने का है, try and see to it that because I have to be also in the market to compete with other developers. Second thing, what was very very important. See, हमको builder लोगों को है ना, builder लोगों को लोग जैसे builder बोले हैं ना, तो सामने वाले के मुंह पे एकदम वो बत्ती सी smile आ जाती है. हालांकि उसको पता नहीं कि हम क्या करते. मैंने तो लोगों को बोला है कि मैं आपको plot देता हूँ, पैसे भी देता हूँ, सब कुछ देता हूँ. April का उसी आवे ना तो उसको तब तक उसको नानी रोज हर टाइम नानी याद आते रहती है ये हालत है अप्रूवल लेते हो उसके लिए भी वन सेकेंड वी आर ओनली रेस्पॉन्सिबल बिकॉज़ वी डोंट नो बिकॉज़ आई टेल इच एंड एवरीवन हु इज़ आवर Chief Election Commissioner today, nobody would know who is the Chief Election Commissioner. Shivala Shah, upon politics madhe aad, tari tumhala kadachit mahish nashnar kon Chief Election Commissioner ahe all India za. Pan, tez me TN session kone mandla na, pratik jan mandi lo, aaple Chief Election Commissioner hote. What I mean to say is that, it is on our, our itself. As mein, जितने भी लोगों को बोलता हूँ कि रोटी कपड़ा और मकान एक मूलभूत सुविधा है जो हम डेवलपर देते हैं एंड वी आर वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट इंडस्ट्री विच इज अ रेवेन्यू अर्नर और एक आदमी की बोलते हैं ना लाइफ की इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रीम है ठीक है हमारे में से पहले लोगों ने कुछ भी गलत किया होगा वो दो चीज बोलने की जगह दस बोले और दस बोल के दिया एक ही ये हालत थी लेकिन अब रेरा आ गया चेंज हो गया बहुत सिचुएशन चेंज हुआ है तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी ऑल पॉलिटिशियन एंड डेवलपर इफ बी बोथ कम together once again jo hafiz ji bol rahe why hafiz ji hasn't told directly i will tell what he means to say aaj for example twin tower noida mein tuti uske wajah se kya hua ki baki sab logon ko jo bhi officer approve karega usko bhi farak padega jo developer hai wo bhi karne ke liye 10 rupees sochega aaj tak koi building todi nahi lekin first time to tuti hai i was the one who welcome that mool hara ki sab log ulta bol rahe the main bola nahi ye bahut achhi baat hai kyunki iske wajah se kya hua ki developer bhi sudhar ja raha hai officer bhi sudhar ja raha hai usko bhi pata hai ki developer ko bhi mujhe aaj approval mil raha hai kuch galat mil raha hai to mujhe galat nahi lena hai kyunki main galat ले लूंगा तो कल ट्विन टावर एक टूटी है तो मेरी भी टूट सकती है एंड कमिंग टू योर पॉइंट सर आई बेक टू डिफर वी डोंट वांट टू मेक इट अ वर्ल्ड क्लास सिटी वी वांट टू मेक इट अ लिवेबल सिटी लिवेबल सिटी मतलब द पीपल शुड बी वेरी वेरी हैप्पी कैन आई इंटरफेयर या ऑफ कोर्स यू आर ऑल द टाइम नो 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 जस्ट वन सेकंड लुक एट हाउ ईच एंड एवरी सिटी इन इंडिया हैव इंप्रूव्ड लुक एट बेंगलोर फ्रॉम airport to the city what the first impression what the guy gets when somebody comes from out of town look at hyderabad look at what sir said you know about another every city look at mumbai what it's a bloody disgrace okay now i will go back to one of my another incident there was a minister and he was in you know, i don't know what ministry he had huh? i'm talking about about some 
15, 20 years back. And I said, sir, you must do this, you must do this, because I was doing a university for him somewhere away from Nagpur. So he, with a big smile, said, ah, I don't know this road. I said, sir, either, you know, either say, either go to this no, 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 I don't know. He was a minister. Huh? So he said, I don't know this road from my Sorry, I'm saying in Hindi a little bit what he said. I know this road up to VT station or I know this road up to airport. I don't know this road from Mumbai. Ka nahi hai. And he is a minister who is governing Mumbai. The other problem with Mumbai is that most of the ministers don't even know anything about Mumbai. They are from interiors of Maharashtra. They run every Friday, Saturday to that constituency, okay? Hell with Mumbai, milk Mumbai, but hell with Mumbai. This is what the whole situation is. Okay. So you must have somebody who is, his heart is throbbing for Mumbai. Unless right. and until you have somebody like that, nothing is going to happen. So, because yeah. their heart is throbbing. I am talking is... to you and my heart is throbbing for somebody else. What will I do? I will say, okay, 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 okay. See you tomorrow, sir. <laughs> That is what is happening of Mumbai. Okay, thank you. I just, have, uh, I just have another panelist to go. So, we have uh, a very important question for him. Can you tell us there is a lot of waste and waste management required for Mumbai? I won't say world class livable, but how do we clean up the waste and what do you think should be the process of doing that? Yeah, thank you. I think when we talk about civic infrastructure, for better or worse, a hierarchy in it. It starts with bijli, then it falls down to the water. If we talk about solid waste management, if we talk about solid waste management, it is typically considered to be bottom of that pyramid itself from an infrastructure standpoint. So the challenges that we talked about in some of the other spaces continue. I will talk about the opportunity in this space. I'm here as someone who is a student of this discipline for the last 25 years. Let me tell you things are changing. I clean Singapore, sir. Next time you land in Changi, the robots which are cleaning Changi, the road that goes from Changi airport all the way to the city, I clean those roads. So, so the things are changing. It's an Indian company that has gone global. And that Indian company is now constructing the first waste energy project. Thank you, Shivale Saab, for your support uh, in Deonar. We talked about Deonar being a shame and a challenge and a problem that can never be solved. Yes, it took us time, but time has changed. Solutions are there. To answer your question, for any city in India, and we have seen it from Delhi to Raipur, sir. Raipur processes 100% of its waste. I'm, I'm really privileged and proud to be the person who's doing it. Hyderabad processes 100% of its waste. I'm privileged and, and really happy that we're involved in that. For Mumbai, there are three principles. I think Jain Saab really touched upon it in his uh, address this morning, but I will quickly summarize it. The first is integration. As long as solid waste management is seen in silos. This collection is hai. This collection ka concession contract is different. This is MRF, there will be segregation, hoga, sorting, it is different. This is domestic hazardous waste, hai, ja aapke ghar mein jo battery is going on, domestic hazardous waste. In your house, the band-aid is going on, that is biomedical waste. In your house, the mobile phone ka charger is going on, that is electronic waste. As long as these silos remain, as long as construction and demolition waste remains a separate project, municipal waste remains a separate project, we believe that real integrated solid waste management will not happen. You you have to have a consistent common program for managing the waste of the entire city. Integration is key. If you make small, small bits, subscale bits, none of them will survive. All of them will be suboptimal. This is the learning that we have from across the world. We are bringing the same recommendation to Mumbai. The second is inclusion. So integration is the first one. Inclusion means you have to start at the source. We all talk about Indore. Do you know which is the best performing source segregation city in the country? The municipal zone, which is the best performing. It is North Chennai, a place called Manali which is 95.6% average source segregation and it is not Tony part of Chennai, it is not, you know, central Chennai or uh, it, is, it is really a suburb of Chennai. Let me also tell you, it is the only municipal zone where everyone, right from the CEO of the collection agency to the last driver is a lady, is a 100% women's zone. They have the highest source of segregation performance. Inclusion not just of the, of the so-called rack pickers or the informal society, but gender inclusion. Uh, inclusion in terms of including startups, including schools, including other parts of the ecosystem into the entire waste management system is the second mantra that I believe is going to drive success for Mumbai. We are proud to be a partner in that. And the third is circularity. I think Jain Saab talked about it with integration, inclusion, and circularity. And by circularity, I mean you recycle everything from Super Tech ka jo 
ट्विन टावर का वेस्ट है सर वो अब 20 एम एम एग्रीगेट फोर्टी एम एम एग्रीगेट और टाइल्स बन के वापस नोएडा की सड़कों में जा रहा है प्लीज आई एम टेलिंग यू इट कैन बी डन फॉर एवरी प्रोजेक्ट इट कैन बी डन फॉर एवरी सिटी देर आर सेवन एट वर्ल्ड क्लास सी एन डी रिसाइकलिंग प्लांट विद नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट प्लस रिकवरी वी विल ब्रिंग दैट टेक्नोलॉजी टू मुंबई आई थिंक टाइम्स आर चेंजिंग सो सर्कुलरिटी इज द थर्ड इनेबलर आई वुड वंस अगेन से इंटीग्रेशन इंक्लूजन एंड सर्कुलरिटी रिसाइकल एवरी थिंग लास्ट पॉइंट देर टू बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स वी लव free lunches we want the world class solutions we talk about singapore and we talk about raipur mein ye ho raha hai hyderabad mein ye ho raha hai chennai mein ye ho raha hai but we don't want to pay for it unfortunately somebody has to bear the cost of waste management and therefore polluter pays i think jain saab i'm again paraphrasing from him somewhere this cost has to be borne directly or indirectly in one way or another and the second thing is a very important principle is the precautionary principle precautionary principle ka matlab humko sab kuch nahi malum this environment is one space where you cannot leave it to the bidder to the concessionaire to the private sector you have to prescribe the hell out of it why because if you make a mistake then the next generation pays for that mistake and the impact is very very severe precautionary principle means when it comes to environmental controls when it comes to standards kya hona chahiye kya minimum hai that has to be specified don't leave it for others to interpret because then the person who interprets the least the person who takes the most amount of environmental risk becomes l1 he becomes the wins all the tenders so prescribe right. precautionary principle these are some of the learnings that i think are potentially relevant for bombay as well sir thank you very much i think uh, you know <laughs> this is perhaps not perhaps i think it is the most passionate panel that i have moderated and i've moderated many panels and i don't think anybody wants to stop if you go on for another two hours i think they'll probably agree but i know there are people waiting for the next one and i've got two bells already but i just want to summarize few things very passionate i think the accessibility of politicians is there now and i think we need to open those doors to change the policies i'll just say it in one line what mr contractor said i think the buildings that you i had actually had 12 questions by the way but everything's covered now i don't have to ask any more rajan ji talked about again similar thing that things are now have to move if you have to take mumbai forward it can't be a world class city let's be very clear but we have to make it a livable city and waste management you talked about integration inclusion circularity i think we'll leave it at that thank you so much great panel i would recommend such a panel should get one hour next time it's been a great one and i think lot of things have come out let's have a big round of applause for all our speakers we have only 5 minutes precisely 5 minutes for uh, q and a hafiz ji rajan what happened in mumbai we concentrated on misuse i was always giving example if one tiffin box there is a blast you will ban all tiffin box so somebody misuse something that's why all policy concentrated on misuse instead of permitting good things for misuse you can imply prevention laws and take action but one or two person misusing it you ban all and that cracked all the mumbai building system and the second thing discretionary powers there should be uh, subodh kumar ji done that very nicely mc all were equal for approvals no discretionary powers and then you in some cities there is a fsi 4 or 5 or 3 you have a plot you leave this much open space and allow building no hanky panky in mumbai there are lot of hanky panky which allows to deflect everything and then all other possibilities came so there should be a fsi based system of approval with the proper open spaces and you can construct whatever possible and that will be a better system i don't know whether uh, many people might be knowing when i should do a lot of work for mr chandra babu naidu i told him sir increase your fsi he not only increased the fsi but he made unlimited fsi now with that unlimited fsi what has happened not any Any builder, nobody wants to do anything illegal, or there is nothing like illegal. People, when we go for any residential use, they say four, five, four, five. Jo bhi apko karna hai, wo karo, and they are all happy. With that, first of all, the pricing of all the housing has come down in Hyderabad. Today, in Hyderabad, center of Hyderabad, you can get. 4000 5000 okay for that kind of a price a nice apartment you can get a nice office space we have been using fsi as a tool everybody right from the down below to the topmost or whatever it is it is a source of you know money making first of all eradicate that 
Not only that, our FSI is not, not on parity with your population, our FSI, finally it is not on parity and then, you know, it's not affordable. So, today, for everything and everything, I have to pay, I have to pay. All other cities, they have increased their FSI, but nobody has to pay. So, what you are talking is a big, big, you know, unending hole in the sea how to eradicate this fsi system in mumbai i i hope you have a uh... sir i will i will tell you what is gone wrong with mcgm sir aap kya hai sone ke anda dene wali murgi hai aap murgi ko hi kaat rahe ho kya ho gaya ki aap pehle itna paise le rahe ho ki jiske wajah se sab cheez mehanga ho gaya aur uske baad mein aapko usko affordable city banana hai see try and understand once we construct you get property tax for life long which is a very very big issue but in no other states there is a premium yahan par aap main batata hu ki आप अपने डेवलपमेंट चार्जेस इफ यू डू कमर्शियल इट इज डबल प्रीवियसली डेवलपमेंट चार्जेस वॉज टू परसेंट आपने उसको बढ़ा के दो को चार किया और चार को आठ परसेंट किया एट परसेंट ऑफ रेडी रकनर रेडी रकनर जब मर्जी आए अगर हम आई एम सॉरी टू यूज द वर्ड हम जाके मिले नहीं तो रेडी रेकनर तो हर साल बढ़ता है हमारा भाव बढ़े या नहीं बढ़े हमारा भाव घट रहा है लेकिन रेडी रेकनर बढ़ रहा है मैंने उसको भी पॉजिटिव में लिया मैं बोला ग्राहक को बोला भैया रेडी रेकनर ही इतना है तो हमारा भाव थोड़ी ज्यादा है हमारा भाव कमी है आप खरीदो बट इट्स अ रॉन्ग वे ऑफ एक्सप्लेनिंग इट सो अंटिल एंड अनलेस अगर आप लोग इसको इंक्लूसिव नहीं समझोगे कि डेवलपर को जो आज जब भी दिमाग में लोग मेरे लोग बुरे मानते हैं कि डेवलपर को आज भी लोग चोरी समझते हैं वो जब तक समझना बंद नहीं करोगे कि डेवलपर छोड़ के सौ मकान बना रहे सौ में से नाइनटी तो डेवलपर ही बना रहा है मुश्किल से दो मकान गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी बना रही है और जो गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी बना रही है उसकी हालत क्या है मुझे बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है तो यू शुड एटलीस्ट वेलकम अज एक्सेप्ट us and make us partners with you and partners in development not in partners in profit you are talking about housing talk about each and every garden talk about half the roads who is making them state yeah. okay it's a developer today we are talking business is going to other states of course it will go to other states if you look at it if say i'm a large organization i want to set up a large office i'll definitely go to hyderabad i'll definitely go somewhere else all, because all, all major buildings are there correct why why because you have made it unaffordable you have been milking that cow milking that cow night and day and very soon it is going to die mumbai today what you know we are talking about make it beautiful make it beautiful what the hell what will he come and see every visitor who comes from abroad what does he want to see he wants to see dharavi only because there is nothing else to see in mumbai I'm telling you I'm telling you this is a fact there is only one thing to see the gateway of India how which was done by the britishers god knows how many years and years and years back do we have one single public building or one single public square or anything that we are proud of nothing dharavi we are proud of this is what the situation is i must compliment masood malik the ramki environment has come to the rescue of the waste management legacy waste of 123 years the mumbai people are suffering from that you know that the book written by somya roy the daughter of the former municipal commissioner has got many international awards for going and ten years studying the pathetic life stories of the people living there the rag pickers you know nobody has bothered we have been talking that biomedical waste management should be out of the city and we have been incinerating that biomedical waste in that locality in that basti where out of 10 5 people are suffering from cancer because dioxins are highly carcinogenic coming from this tissue combustion so thank you for that and i would also last moment i mean last point i must compliment hapis contractor what he has said sir you remember when nimbalkar was the secretary mmrd we were talking at nehru center are the only one who supported the coastal road and then everybody pounds on very heavily criticizing that you are going to damage mumbai environment now it is after so many years it has come but we lost many years from the getting clean environment of this city thank you thank you sir that coastal road was proposed with a 500 meter yes. garden strip yes, yes. okay I know, I know. which yeah. singapore and everyone has it and now what did we get finally with everything we are having 20 meter of a promenade 
It's yes. a disgrace. <laughs> Our 20 meter is what? We have yes. lost it. We have lost an opportunity, sir. We have to think about global warming, sea levels rising. This was a great opportunity that you could have made it and made a wider green patch, which everyone could have access. You lost it. In the next summit, uh, probably we will have one hour CEO roundtable session. Yeah, even that will be less. But right now, let's clap loudly for them. Now, I would like to request Mr. Ramamurthy Mayavan, Editor-in-Chief, ARC Events and Media Private Limited, to please come up on stage and hand over special mementos to all our esteemed speakers.